by the way, I forgot to hit record, so that's my bad as a facilitator. <laughs> so jumping in, and for those of you who might be joining this, we're looking at a spreadsheet that Stacey has shared about um, sort of helping identify some activities or performance-based assessments around the framework. Um, any other questions from the from the folks who uh, joined the breakout group? Because this is your time to uh, to uh, ask questions of Stacy. Yeah, hi, Stacy. Uh, so, yeah, a note here. Go ahead. Uh, I, I was just wondering, you know, which of these assessments is is sort of an online, you know, assessment that people take automatically, and you know, scoring goes, and which are more hands on, or or you're doing something on paper. How do they divide out? So, um, so I also, so I also just sorry, I'm like dumping links. So there's, um, and, and maybe I can share. So I would say that most of them are um, are kind of like the ones that we were working with are are not interact. Like they're they're on paper or like maybe in a Google form or kind of more traditional survey type stuff. Uh, format. And those, the, I should say that the assessments that are a little bit more kind of can be lifted and adapted for different contexts, right? So I think that's what's, uh, everybody, I, I talked to a lot of people that want digital skills assessments. And, you know, you, really what's best about, you know, uh, assessing somebody's digital skills is within a context, right? And which depends on, you know, your learner and kind of what they're interested in. Um, and so, uh, so I think again, yes, yeah, some people kind of integrate it within other assessments that they're they're doing as part of as part of a class. Uh, so there is, and then um, so then you have some interactive assessments like that are built into like a program or curriculum. So like Google uh, has built in kind of assessments or in the, um, kind of lessons that they do, and there's a certification you can take. So there's some of these certifications that are kind of these standalone pieces, which like. You know, it's usually cost money and a lot of time. Really, there should be a real need, a reason why you're spending that much energy into something like that. Uh, but then, of course, then you have North Star, which is probably this, the, the most popular, most common uh, kind of digital uh, skills assessment, which is this it's an interactive, like, uh, you, it's just like a uh, multiple choice questions that you can take. Uh, and their assessment is available um, for anybody to use, and then you can pay to um, to access their curriculum and um, track users and things like that. Uh, North Star is, and it came out of um, adult uh, education in Minnesota. I was curious if is anybody here used North Star at all? Okay, Rachel. Yeah, I was curious about your experience with it. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like a, almost like a simulator, like if, um, you know, that you, they're clicking on a screen, a simulated screen of something, and maybe they're opening files. Um, it was, it was very useful. We used it for um, like a pre-assessment in a basic, you know, computer course that we gave. Um, and so we had different modules on like file management and stuff. It helped us really gauge where the students were. Um, and a post assessment too. Um, the question I had actually for you was if you know if there's anything like North Star for mobile phones, if, if anybody is doing anything with mobile phones like um, in that same vein where we can gauge a student's ability to toggle between apps or something like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I don't think anything exists now. I, I think that North Star may be working on something uh, for that. Uh, you know, it's it's so funny because it's been, so like I mentioned briefly in the talk that our group has done a lot of international work. And so actually I, for a project um, that our group had worked on and then I also picked up, we kind of co-created this a mobile information literacy curriculum like some years back and it was originally developed for you know again for these kind of contexts where people were starting with mobile phones so like some years ago it was like oh you know Myanmar all of a sudden like their first interaction with a computer is using a mobile phone and so from our experience with that as we started seeing these 
trends in the US of mobile only, we, we're trying to like, what about mobile? Like, let's focus mobile, let's integrate mobile. And um, I feel like that it did not took this pandemic <laughs> to like really like be like, okay, yes, it's important. Um, and uh, because yeah, the old, because for in my interviews and conversations with organizations, and you probably have more knowledge about this, is like, you know, they, you know, try to do everything remotely. And so you're going to start with what people can do use with their mobile device, because that's what they're most familiar with. And then you can build upon that before moving to the computer. Um, and so I see a couple of comments. Uh, yeah, so I think that North Star, one of the things that I um, am not uh, crazy about some of the things North Star, especially their basics um, assessment, I feel like really focuses on things that I don't think are really uh, as important to start with. Like, you know, you know, I think one of the things is like, you know, tell the difference between like a monitor and a CPU, like things like that. And it's like, yeah, sure, like that's good. But again, thinking about somebody who is like really beginning coming in, like, like let's not get bogged down into like some of those terminologies. Like, let's just like, let's get them doing what they want to do. And then we can kind of, you know, backfill some of that. And then, um, and then again, there's no, there's no mobile a piece to that. Uh, I think what's what's uh, what's appealing about Northstar is it's it's something you can use out of the box. They have a lot of support to it. There's a lot of people using it. Uh, I know our state library is actually like bought a license and it's going to uh, for libraries to be able to use it. Uh, so so it'll be interesting to see how um, how they how they end up doing that at a scale. Any other questions? I, I think, you know, where, where some of those shortcomings of North Stars is, I think, why there was a couple questions around that performance-based, um, mm -hmm. you know, sort of element. I think one of the things that we've seen here in Chicago, um, or even statewide in Illinois, with orgs that are using it, is there's language barriers, um, obviously, with North Star, and just that setting in general yeah. of, you know, being in a proctor test uh, can be intimidating, whereas if you're just asking a student to do something and just observing them, um, you can sometimes get a little bit more insight. And sometimes they're just doing it in a different way than the way that's sort of prescribed um, on that test, as is the case with any, <laughs> um, you know, sort of boxed or canned, uh, standardized, I guess, test, if you will. Right. Yeah. And there's some good points in the chat here, too. I think something else that kind of, I, you know, I don't know if North Star necessarily does, but some of these sort of same sort of assessments do where it's you know it tests to see if you know you know like you know can you click on the right menu first to go where the edit button is or something like that and it's like who cares like I click around on menus all the time because I can't remember where stuff is <laughs> but, um yeah I will say that I um there were some assessments that I didn't even score that well line only because I had some other route of copying and pasting or something like that. Right. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So to that point, and one of the other uh, comments that was made by Amy, thank you, is the challenge of things being outdated. So you had mentioned that, you know, that's one of the things that you're looking at. How do you envision sort of, I guess, maintaining this framework, um, knowing that like a lot of these are, you know, the, the, the genesis of, of the framework itself is because you were looking at the things that are common across these assessments and these curricula um, as a sort of mechanism for defining what are the skills folks need. But when you're looking at things like the skills need, people need for work, um, or which is sort of going to be changing in an ongoing basis, what, what do you have plans or thoughts in terms of how you're going to work to sort of update um, the uh, this the framework? Uh, no, uh, I mean, because really, <laughs> no. I mean, if somebody came to me and we're like, "Here's some money to do it," I'd be like, "Okay, let's talk." <laughs> right? So it all comes down to you know, comes down to comes down to funding, uh, and I. You know, I think that if we were to do an update, I think that one of the first steps would be to then go back to, yeah, um, uh, yeah. Thanks, Rachel. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so if anybody's interested, there's my, my email address is available. Uh, 
you know, it would be that we would talk with a little bit more back again to the organizations, you know, going back to this idea of kind of around, you know, its original purpose and talking with organizations and like, what do they need and how is this useful? I think it's, it's interesting to see kind of where it's been our concept, you know, it's been, it's being used and adapted from. Uh, I mean, I would love to see others take up on it and riff, you know, kind of improve upon it uh, and and move this forward too. So I think that's one of the nice things about research, right? Is you can put something out there, you, you need to put something out there and then others take it and, and make it better. Um, so um, yeah, no, no, uh, no plans at this moment to, to do yeah. further updates. Yeah, I just, um, to that end, I chatted a link in the, um, in the chat. Uh, <laughs> that is a wakelet that we had developed actually as part of Digital Us, um, that it, it includes the Seattle framework, as well as a number of the curricula and assessments that they used for that, as well as some interesting studies that actually were released around the same time last year, um, around sort of just understanding like the implications of these changing skills that that are needed for um, success using technology, and it it is it's 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 not going to you know stop or go away, and it's not there's like the baseline skills that are that sort of are part of digital resilience, so that one can adapt to a new technology when it comes around, but then there's even things that you know we continue to struggle with even as um, seasoned professionals. There was a great uh, podcast by Ezra Klein uh, last week, I think, on um, how email and Slack have actually made us less productive um, because of sort of the nature of the, the intrigue and the, uh, the sort of idealism around being able to immediately contact somebody and how that really actually creates more noise than productivity. Mm -hmm. um, and I've said this for a year, you, you, how can you name something Slack uh, for something that is about uh, productivity? That makes no sense to me. <laughs> yeah, no, and that's, I mean, I think that's, you know, it goes to like this, you know, thinking about digital literacy and this intersection of like 21st century skills, right? And like, you know, strategies around, you know, managing all this, all this stuff. Um, although I, I know that we're about, I think we're about out of time, um, but, unless I have my calendar wrong, but I did when I mentioned going back to kind of what you talked about there, um, as far as kind of building off virtual work, I have like these, I, what I, what I'm hope to be, hope to work on within the next year or so is really, um, is uh, writing kind of a larger paper about digital skill, like building upon all these pieces of research that I've been doing with these different organizations and conversations that I'm having, like with, um, like people with youth, it's really is, you know, thinking about, you know, digital skills and the placement of um, kind of technology, you know, you know, trying to synthesize things to be, again, like a kind of a, so it's a, kind of a different angle, the resource, and again, kind of making this kind of, you're talking about the digital assessments that are available and not available and how they relate to these other kind of frameworks and stuff. And it's, I've got a lot of things kind of swirling around and I'm hoping that I can put some time aside this summer to kind of actually get that down, uh, get some drafts going. Great, great, well, we look forward to it. Well, thank you again so much for your time today um, and for all of the work that you've done, it's, uh, it's helpful and I'm hopeful that the work that we do can help to amplify, um, that great sort of start place that you've created. Yeah. I, yeah. Thanks so much for having me. This is great. I love that, uh, you know, you're taking, you know, building upon our framework and building it out and, you know, into this completely different kind of, uh, these resources. That's fantastic. That's, you know, why we, we, you know, do the research for people to use it. So it's great to see it being used. All right. Well, everyone enjoy your um, afternoon. I don't know if we all have beautiful cherry trees uh, around us, but it's like sunny here in Chicago. So <laughs> um, hopefully you can enjoy your afternoon and weekends. And thank you again, Stacey, for um, joining us today. Yeah, I put my email address again in the chat. Feel free to reach out if you want to talk some more. Great. Thanks so much. Take care, everyone. Bye.